Today, let's talk about Russell Shikov and how close he might be to the NHL. We're going to start this video about a former Husky with a current one. Hello, Pete. How are you doing, Poop? Ah, oh, yeah, thank you. How are you doing? I just wanted to give you a slight update on Pete because he's not so slight anymore. If you remember the video of my introduction to him, there is a picture of it. And now look at him. Look at the size of this guy. He's massive. He's like 50 pounds now. And he's only four, about five months old. Huh, Pooper? Yeah, he's not very impressed by this. He wants to go play. Yeah, okay, I'll let you down, bud. There you go. Anyways, this video is not about Pete. It's about the former Husky, Russ Nishikov. Because he's the talk of the Islanders community right now. And rightfully so. Not only is he scoring goals like this, or goals like this, but he's also putting up 11 points through his first 8 games at the AHL level. So today we're going to try to answer that. How close or far is Russell Nishikov from the NHL? And let's just start off with the good stuff. Uh, and to be fair, there's not a whole lot of bad stuff anyways. Uh, the good stuff, production, right? We already went over 11 points, 8 games, 4 game multi-point streak. Epic. Excellent. But that isn't everything, right? Production doesn't give you the full picture of how close a player is. It's certainly a big deal, though, right? You don't call up players to the NHL from the AHL if they're not scoring points. Unless it's a shutdown defenseman or a first overall pick or a, a early first round pick and has only played a handful of games, you're not calling up someone who has zero points on the board. You need production because production typically states that I'm good enough at this level to do things that win games, right? Which is the entire point of the process. How can we amass enough talent to win more games than the next team? Uh, and it clearly, Rustin is doing that at the AHL level right now. The production says things are, Rustin is at a, a point where he can produce well or, or allow you to win games at the AHL level. So that's good. There's also the whole point of confidence. This is a confidence-driven game, and Ruslan is feeling it. Obviously, the production helps, right? Like, anyone who produces is going to feel, feel confident. But he was confident before that. Not cocky, not cocky, but confident. When I asked him, like, I'm, I can't wait to see you with the Islanders, he's like, yeah, the NHL ones. He was confident that he could make it to the NHL level from the AHL. Now, again, that doesn't mean he's cocky. He realizes the steps ahead of him and what he's going to have to overcome to get to where he needs to be. But he's confident that he's got the skill to eventually get there. And so far, his resume sure looks pretty damn good, right? You match that confidence with the production. And you can't deny that he's pretty darn close. Now let's talk about the not so positive side of things. Um, what are the questions surrounding uh, Russ Nishikov? And that's how I really want to frame it, questions, because these aren't like dead set knocks against him. But there are questions around him, uh, and, and there, there are, I'm going to say four. The first one is uh, who he's playing with. Right now, he's lined up with two AHL veterans in Andy Andrioff and Chris Terry. So the question then is, how much are they benefiting from, or sorry, how should I say it? How much is he helping them or how much are they helping him, right? Who is benefiting the most from playing with who? Is it Ruslan with the two AHL vets or the two AHL vets with Ruslan? That's a question that remains to be answered. The other question, and it's less question, more fact, I suppose, because it's his size. He's listed at 5'9", 165. That's not a big player at the NHL level. It just isn't. We've seen guys this size produce well and do well at the NHL level, but there aren't a ton of them. And he realizes that. He knows that very well. He has said so the la in our last interview. Um, but unfortunately for him, someone who is equally talented and equally productive, but is six feet tall, so three inches taller, um, will have a better shot at cracking the NHL simply because of that six and zero on the height chart. Because he's 5'9", he's going to have to produce at this rate, basically the entire season to get the same chance someone who's three inches taller than he is. The other question is, can his play, his physical play, 
translated at the NHL level. So what I mean by that is he's not bullying people physically off pucks necessarily, right? He doesn't have the frame to do so. It doesn't mean he's weak. You saw it in the video. Man is swole. Like, look at his shoulders. Guy is swole. Um, but that he doesn't have the weight to move people, uh, bigger people off the puck. Like, he's not moving Scott Mayfield off the puck quite easily. He has to do it in other means. And is that translatable to the NHL? What is he able to do that when there are NHL defensemen there? Those are questions. He's doing it at the AHL level, at least through the small sample size. But is that translatable at the NHL level? That still remains to be answered. And the final one is something that I've brought up before is how long he holds on to the puck. Um, and, and while it's getting better, um, I think he still needs to catch up to the speed of the game. And he will. But that, I don't think that that's debatable. He will catch up to the speed of the game. It's how soon is that going to happen? It seems that it's already been done. Um, but the sample size is so small to be, or is too small to be like, yes, he's at the speed of the, N the AHL and thus could translate that to the NHL. That is still a question that still needs to be answered and will only be answered through a larger sample size. So how close is he or not to the NHL? I would say he's pretty darn close. If it were to be, if a winger goes down in the Islanders top nine right now, he'd probably be the first name called up. Probably. I'm not going to say it will, but but probably. It's not going to be full, and it's certainly not going to be Aturatu. Uh, and you might say, well, why? Well, Zafu isn't producing at the same rate. He's, I think, having a harder time finding space at the AHL level. That'll come. And Aturatu, because he's a center, and they don't want to play him at wing. They want him to be a top six center, and so they're going to let him just sit and mature. Also, these guys are younger than, than wrestling, so like he's going to benefit immediately from that. So again, how close is he? I am saying he's very close. He is a lot closer than he is far away. He should be the number one prospect in the Islanders' prospect pool right now, and everyone else should come after him. Holmstrom, Tzfull, Ratu, Baldzik, all of them are below Rustin Ishikov right now. You can arrange them in whatever order you want, but number one has to be Rustin Ishikov right now. Um, he is close to the NHL level. We still need a larger sample size, and if it holds, and I think it just might, he's going to be knocking in the door ASAP. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. I'm sorry about the long break. Just things have been very difficult here. I should be back to daily videos ASAP. I know I've said it in the past, but I'm really, really trying. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. Hit the subscribe button, please. And we'll catch you next time.